Ever notice the Luke have trouble burning glass with his sword, while Bennett can do it with ease? And you wonder, how? Well, that is because of science. Genjin's science. From the 19th century, where Sir Isaac Newton discovered gravity, to today, where we invent COVID vaccine and people are still arguing if the Earth is flat, science has been ever evolving and so has the theory. And well, this is elemental gauge theory. Alright, alright, enough of that. But today, I want to talk about elemental gauge theory, which, even if you're not into theory crafting, is a very important part of Genshin that you should know about. Going back to the title screen, you can repeat the experiment at home as well, but you'll notice that the Luke does indeed cannot burn grass with his searing onslaught. However, Banner can easily do it with a single elemental skill. And why is that? And the reason, of course, is because the Luke applied a weaker pyro than Bennett. In Genshin Impact, elemental application can pretty much be categorized into two categories, weak application and strong application. You might have heard these terms before. However, as it turned out, we can do much much better than that. The loose elemental skill will apply one unit worth of pyro, while Bennett's elemental skill will apply two unit worth of pyro. And this means that Bennett's elemental skill apply exactly twice as many pyro than the Luke's elemental skill does. Also observe how Bennett can break the shield much larger portion because of this, since Bennett apply exactly twice as many pyro as the Luke does. A sheet like this from the website Kerching Me will tell you exactly how much elemental every single skill in the game will apply. And from here, you can see that indeed the loot only apply one and Bennett apply two worth of pyro. You can even observe that elemental application is not just limited to one or two. In fact, Beidou's elemental burst on cast will apply a four whole unit worth of electron on cast. As it turned out, it takes two unit worth of pyro to be able to burn a grass. And so a character like Klee who only apply one on her normal attack will also unable to burn grass similar to the Luke. And now at this point, you might be thinking, what if I just attack two times? Can I just add the element together to get one plus one equals to two? Uh, as it turns out, you can really. Attacking this rune guard with one from the Luke and two from Bennett does not actually make it free, since elemental do not actually add together, but instead simply override and replenish. Meaning Bennett's 2 pyro will override the loose 1 pyro and so there's currently only 2 pyro on this rune guard. And you can see Xingqiu easily wipe the pyro out. Wait, replenish? What does that mean? In Genshin Impact, elemental will slowly decay over time. You can actually tell by the slowly fading symbol above of the rune guard head, indicating that it is about to expire. A weak elemental application or 1 unit application will decay at a rate of 9.5 seconds per unit. So in here, you can see after 9.5 seconds, the pyro is completely gone and has disappeared from the rune guard. A strong application will decay at a much faster rate at 6 seconds per unit. Here you can see that by the 6 second mark, we have already decayed 1 unit worth of pyro, meaning currently there's only 1 more unit worth of pyro remaining on the rune guard. And finally, after the 12 second mark, our entire pyro has disappeared. And for reference, Beidou Elemental Burst that applies Super Electro will decrease at the rate of 4.25 seconds per unit instead. Now this applies to every element in the game except for Anemo or Geo, and that is because you cannot apply Anemo or Geo onto an enemy. And now you might ask, wait what happened if you mix weak and strong element, what's the decay rate? And to that I say, excellent question, let me show you. When mixing element together, the decay rate will simply be the one that is first applied. In this case, since the Luke first applied one unit or weak pyro first, the decay rate will simply be 9.5 seconds per unit. This is called a A-type decay. Recall that strong pyro decay at a rate of 6 seconds per unit. However, here since we apply the weak pyro first, we can see it takes 18 seconds for the pyro to decay. In this scenario, the Luke first applied one unit worth of pyro with A-type decay. Bennett that raised that 1 to A2 by overriding it with his elemental skill, however keeping the A-type decay. So in here, we call this a 2A pyro. 
With that being said, let's move on to Elemental Reaction, which of course is a huge part of Genshin Impact. Applying Element onto a target with already an Infused Element will produce what's known as a Elemental Reaction. In this case, a Swirl. Reaction can be triggered as long as there is already an element applied to the target, known as an Aura. It does not matter how many unit worth of Aura are there, as long as there is any, it will trigger a reaction. After triggering a reaction, elemental gauge will be subtracted from the target corresponding to how much element you have used. Overload and Superconduct have a 1.25 modifier, meaning that if you use a weak trigger, you only consume 1.25 worth of element, however a strong trigger will consume 2.5 worth of element. In here, Bennet first apply 2 unit worth of Pyro. Beto Tie Color then produce a overload reaction. Now since Beto Tie Color apply a strong electro, this will consume 2.5 unit worth of Pyro and leaving the Rune Guard with absolutely no element behind. On the other hand, Fischl who apply a weak electro will only consume 1.25 worth of Pyro, meaning that this leaves us with 0.75 unit worth of Pyro on the Rune Guard and let us do a Vaporize reaction. And speaking of electric charge, electric charge will keep both elemental gauge and simply consume 0.4 unit worth of each every time it ticks. This explains why firework child team can constantly do electric charge because you are constantly refilling both gauges. A 4 melts or vaporize have a 2.5 modifier while a reverse only have a 0.625. For example here, we use Kaya to apply 2 unit worth of Pyro onto the Rune Guard. The Luke then come in with a 4 melt. Since the Luke has weak Pyro and only apply 1 unit worth of Pyro, after a 2.5 modifier, it means it will consume 2.5 unit worth of Cryo, completely wiping out the Cryo on the Rune Guard. On the other hand, Bennett first apply 2 unit worth of Pyro and then Rosaria come in applying weak Cryo twice each doing a melt reaction and removing 0.625 worth of pyro. Observe that at this point, there is still some pyro remain on the rune guard, which lets Kaya get another melt off. However, doing it in a different order will produce different results, since Kaya produced a strong cryo. You will notice that if you do it in the different order, the remaining result is that Rosaria will not be able to melt twice and instead cryo aura will remain onto the enemy. This is also the reason why Bennett is required for Chongyin to do a triple melt, since Bennett can apply 2 unit worth of Pyro, which is enough for Chongyin to do a triple melt. However, when using 1 unit worth of Pyro, such as from the Goba, you can see that you cannot triple melt and see how the last number is different from the former two. Finally, Swirl and Crystallite have a 0.25 modifier on reaction. For example, when Zhongli Crystallite using his weak geo, he will take away 0.25 worth of element from the target. This is why people don't recommend putting Albedo or Zhongli Pitter into your Vaporize team, and let illustrate that using Science. Suppose the free is fighting an enemy and you do the standard Deluke combo which is normal attack followed by a Searing Onslaught. Your first attack will trigger a Sinshu's Elemental Burst and applying 1 unit worth of Hydro onto the enemy. The Luke normal attack will then see there's a Hydro onto the enemy and consume and do a Vaporize reaction. Then you'll take away 0.625 worth of Hydro and thus leaving you with 0.325 worth of Hydro onto the enemy. However, Zhongli then come in with his pillar and he see that there is currently 0.325 Hydro on the enemy and thus he decided to do a crystallized reaction, taking away 0.625 worth of hydro and leaving you with 0 hydro. And then finally, the Deluke go and hit the Searing Onslaught in. But at this point, there's no element onto the enemy and so the Searing Onslaught will now apply 1 pyro onto the enemy and leaving the Rune Guard with 1 pyro. At this point, your entire combo is grief and you're doomed. Because the next time Sinchil's Elemental Burst come in, he'll see there's one Pyro onto the enemy and thus decide to do a Vaporize reaction, consuming the one Pyro and leaving it with zero. However, the Luke Normal Attack will come in and say, oh, there is no element again, so he'll once again apply one Pyro onto the enemy. And this cycle repeat and you can see that you can no longer do Vaporize reaction on the Luke. Now finally, Sora will apply either 2.25 or 3.25 of the Sora element to his neighbor. Why does it apply so much? I have no idea. Ask me, Hoyo. Better roll venti, I guess. 
And that's the basic overview for Elemental Gauge 3. Special thanks to everyone on NGA for constructing the Monster University and every free crafter from Ker Chainming to organize the information and put it up on Ker Chainming website. For more detail, be sure to visit the website and the link will be in the description. And finally, of course, we'll be covering ICD the next time around, so don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.